water conservation and water use efficiency are topics that any landscaper or gardener needs to be cognitive of. What we're doing in this video is we are going to be installing a drip irrigation system. There is no more efficient way to water plants than to use drip irrigation. When we water overhead, we're wasting a lot of water. When we use drip, we can put water directly in the root zone right where we need it and maximize that water use efficiency. I want to thank our sponsors for this video. Our friends over at Rainpoint are the sponsors for the video today and they have supplied us with three tools that's going to help us be more efficient with watering. I'm really excited about these products. I'm gonna walk you through it. One of the cool things about Rainpoint is you can control all of these from your phone. If you're not watering enough, you can bump up the water usage from your phone. You're watering too much. You can bump it down all through the app. So they've sent us a water flow meter. They have sent us an irrigation display hub, which I'm really excited about. This is going to be able, to, I'm going to put this on my back porch and I'm going to be able to monitor everything that's going on in the yard in terms of irrigation. And they also sent us a two zone water timer. So what I'll do with this two zone water timer is on one of the zones, we are going to hook up the drip irrigation on the other zone. I'm just going to leave my hose on that. So it's as easy as pushing a button to get water to the hose while the drip irrigation is going to be running off the clock. So the first thing that we want to do is ensure that we do not have a leaky spigot. So I intentionally loosened this one up a little bit to show you how to correct a leaky spigot. So you need a pair of channel locks or uh, maybe a small pipe wrench would work too. But there is underneath the knob, we're just gonna turn counterclockwise. And you can see here before there was water coming down the hose, it was coming from here. Now there's no water coming out. It's a simple fix. Make sure this is correct before you put on your timer to your spigot. So the first thing we want to do is install this two zone timer. And so we're gonna open this up. And I love that Rainpoint has these little stickers that says save water all over the boxes because at the end of the day, that's really what drip's all about. We're trying to be more efficient with our water usage. So not only is it better for everybody in the community, you're not using as much water, saves you a little bit of money as well. Your water bill will go down because of it. So before you put this on, there's a place on the back that holds batteries. So you will need to put four AA batteries in here in order for the push button controls for the valves to work. And all you do, this is just like hooking up a hose. So you have a female threaded end on the valve side and of course the male threaded side for your spigot and we're going to get that on there nice and tight we're going to see if we need the channel locks to get it on there tight enough to keep it from leaking that we're going to turn it on you see there we got water off one side push the button the water cuts off we're going to push the button on this side so this side my left hand side this will be my hose side we're going to run drip off the right hand side. With the left side, just test it out. It's working well. We're gonna turn that off. There are no leaks. Your hose spigot stays on all the time in order for this to work. So make sure that you have no leaks where the female thread of your controllers here meet up with the male end of the spigot. And this looks really dry. I don't see any evidence at all of water, there's a nice seal in there. So this connection is, is good to go. So the next thing we have to do is hook up our two zone system to our drip. And so to do that, we've got to convert from male thread from the valve to half inch poly tube. And so we have a little quick connect here. And so all I'm gonna do is take the quick connect 
and hook it up. So what we want to do is this is a little barb. It goes on here. I'm going to screw this on. And I've got this that hooks up to the quick connect. So, so what I can do here, now that I've got a male thread going to, so this is uh, this end is going to be female thread, and there, there's a half inch adapter that goes to poly for the drill. We can hook that up. And the reason I like the quick connect, yeah, I could just hook up the drip direct to this, but with the quick connect, it's as easy as that to take it on and off. So I like using the little quick connect feature that comes in the box. The next step is we need to loosely lay out where this poly tubing or drip tubing needs to go. So the grass area here in front of me, you can actually slightly bury this stuff and it'll be okay. But once we get to this bed, what we're gonna do, we're gonna rake back this pine straw and then we're gonna stake this tube down in the bed and put the pine straw back on top of it. And you won't even be able to see it. So before I covered the, the pine straw back up over the top of the drip, I wanted to show it to you. You may notice a smaller black wire down there beside the drip. Don't pay attention to that. That's my low voltage outdoor wiring. It also can sit on top of the ground. But notice we've got some stakes in. About every 10 feet or so, all we did was we took some stakes, lightly staked that into the ground with a rubber mallet. Now the only thing left to do in terms of this prep portion is to put this pine straw back over the top of our drip so that it's covered up and we don't see the drip. So now that we have our half inch tube blade from our clock all the way up to these plants, the next thing we want to do is put in drip emitters. So I'm using a two gallon per hour drip emitter. I have several azaleas up here. I have several Akuba up here. And they were heavily damaged in the flash freeze of 2022. Uh, they completely defoliated. I'm trying to nurse them back to health. These are bread and butter plants for where I'm at. You stick them in the ground, you forget about them. Nothing's supposed to happen to them. But we went from 54 degrees to 8 degrees in three hours. And that's what got them. It's not the fact it went to 8. It's how fast it got there. So we're gonna use these drip emitters to give them the correct amount of water. Also got a little maple tree right here as well. So your drip emitters are going to have a green barb. That green barb is going to be inserted into your half inch drip line. It just pokes right in. On top of that emitter, it has a place to put quarter inch poly pipe and so all we need to do is cut off the appropriate length of quarter inch to get to the base of this tree and that's about perfect right there so i just have a pair of pvc pipe cutters that these do pretty good for this cuts it right in it in half you take your quarter inch you put it on the admitter you stretch it out, and in this case, I'm just gonna wrap it gently around the trunk of this tree. And this tree will get two gallons of water per hour when we water, if we water for one hour. So I've run this drip all the way to this Japanese maple that I grafted last year. This is a one-year-old graft. We're about 200 feet away from the spigot, the point of origination of, of our irrigation system here but what i'm going to do is the end of your poly pipe it is imperative that you have one of these this is a hose crimp we're going to put it on one side we're going to fold our poly over slide it through the other and cinch that up as far as we can we have crimped the end of our line so water just doesn't spew out It'll build up pressure in our line and go out those quarter inch poly tubes to the drip emitters. So the other product that I want to show you is this quick connect meter reader that can go on the end of a hose. And I've already used it some, I've tested it here. So you can measure water from a hose with this. I'm in another area of the yard where uh, we don't have the irrigation hooked up. And in this particular case, say for example, I want to put some miracle Grow 
on these daylilies right here behind me. And so I have the hose kinked right now. But as we water, and I'll bring the meter up closer, it is actively measuring how much water is going through. So I can I can measure how many gallons of Miracle Grow I'm putting out over the flowers here. And also this meter that hooks up to the hose is going to sink to the hub that sits on the porch. So I can get an active reading here and that reading is getting fed to the hub on the porch and I can collect data over time as to how much water I'm putting out. Just a really neat feature. Here again, there's no leaks in this assembly. You may see a little bit of water coming out of the end of the miracle Grow uh, spigot here, but that is just because this is an old miracle Grow spigot. The product that Rainpoint sent me from here back, no leaks at all. Really, really impressed with that. Okay, so I've moved on to the porch where I'm going to keep my irrigation display hub. It feels good to be in the shade. I've already got the hub up and running. It was very easy. There's three AA batteries that go in the back, but that's just for backup. You have an outlet cord here. It slides in discreetly underneath the back. And this table right here is where I'm going to keep this. I sit here every morning, drink some coffee. I can put that right there. And it gives you invaluable data. One thing I really like about this, I can control the light setting. There's a light switch on top. I can dim it. I can make it brighter. I'm not sure if that's showing up on film with the reflection from the sun. Also gives me temperature. It's a balmy 91 degrees right now. So if you see me sweating, that's why the humidity's up too. We're up to about 55%. Starting to cloud up. We're probably going to get some rain. Wouldn't that always happen? You put in an irrigation system and it rains, but that's good. We're, we're always thankful for the rain. I get some really good data here. I get date, I get time. I've already told you I get outdoor temp, I get outdoor humidity. It will tell me when my irrigation is gonna run once we set it, we haven't set it yet. And it'll tell me how many gallons I used in my last usage. Remember, we put that usage meter on that side and that's where that's going to show up. It'll also give me the day's high and low temperature on here. So just all kinds of really, really good data that's gonna come from this irrigation hub. It was really easy to set up. So through the app, it's a step-by-step -step process. Um, you hook up the hub, it syncs to your phone, it gives it access to the Wi-Fi in the house. And then the irrigation control is a sub to the hub. So uh, I think I had to hold down the left button on the two valve irrigation controller. It flashed, I let it go. And within 30 seconds, the hub and my phone had picked it up. And so I can control my irrigation from my phone. I can look at the usage from here and I'm getting other outdoor data as well. I, I'm really, really liking this so far. So let's go ahead and set up the times for our irrigation run times. So we're in the app and you can see here, this is my irrigation hub. It's giving me all the data right there. It's floating around 89, 90 degrees, 47% humidity. It even gives me barometric pressure. We're at 28.84 uh, millibars of mercury. You can see right there. All right, so I get barometric pressure. And then, so the, this is the two zones on our irrigation. So let's go to zone two. That's the right. See it has R. That is the side that we are going to run our irrigation drip off of. I'm going to go to uh, plan. All right, so you can have a rain delay. So if it rains, you can set it on a rain delay. We're going to add a plan start time. It's best to water early in the morning. So you don't want to water right when it gets dark and, and have that water just sitting there. If you can water early right before the sun comes up, it's just the best time to do it. All right, so we're going to, we're going to start this at 4 a.m. Duration of watering. Let's go for one hour. 
because remember we're only putting out two gallons of water per hour we're going to start there and if it's too much we can always dial it back so that's going to give my plants two gallons of water and we're going to do that every day and we're going to hit confirm and it just loaded it up it's as easy as that our irrigation is ready to come on I'm going to manually turn on the drip. We're going to go up to where the drip is run, make sure it's running. I hear the water going through. Sounds like it's nice and smooth. I don't hear any water hammers in this, which is nice sometimes. With valve assemblies, you'll get what's called a water hammer with uh, excessive water pressure, not enough water pressure, or a lot of turning within the valve itself. It'll boop, 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 boop that the water sounds nice and smooth going through this valve. So, so far I'm impressed. Let's go see what kind of water we have up at the top. It's working like a charm. I'm, I'm so happy. I'm so pleased with this. This is going to take hours out of my monthly routine of coming out here and hand watering. I want to thank the sponsors of this video, Rainpoint, for making this possible. I'll leave a link down in the description below. Go check them out. I'm really pleased with this. I think you will be too. As always, thank you for watching The Plant Doctor. And until next time, happy gardening.